So we are up to the reading portion of the show. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, joined by the lovely Maude Garrett. Um, whether you're listening to this in podcast form or watching it in video cast form on Geek Bomb or watching it live here on Twitch, we welcome you and thank you. So uh, let's head to check in with Amy Cassandra Martinez for what's going on. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> Whoa. We've got more more Keanu news. Today was two out of three Keanu pieces of <laughs> information, but also you guys talked about Cyberpunk. So all Keanu all today. It's true. Uh, so so this uh Boom Studios is proud to announce Berserker. Berserker oh, Bird. It's Zerker in here. Berserker. Mm -hmm. So it's a twelve issue limited series from Keanu Reeves. This is his comic book writing debut. Uh, this is a fun little quote from him. He said, I have loved comics since I was a young kid and they have been a significant influence on me artistically. Um, this I is pretty it. brutally violent. So just keep that in mind. Berserker number one will debut in comic shops in October of this year. But um, today's the... 24th so on the 26th this this video if you're watching this on VOD this will already be live but if you're watching this right now live right now uh, fans who attend the Boom Studios Discover Yours panel on July 26th at 11 a.m. Pacific time at Comic-Con at home will get a very special preview of never before seen interior art as well as like behind the scenes information and stuff so just kind of keep that in mind and if you want to register comic-con.org but if not, I mean, this is still very exciting. It is, like I said, very mature. Um, and you can also get it online, comicshoplocator.com in October. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. I had no idea this was even a thing. Did you, Mon? You wrote it. Um, I've heard of Berserker. Um, I didn't know that Keanu was writing it. And I'm kind of wondering what the point of difference is between sort of like the John Wick that we've seen him do three movies of already and then mm -hmm. something like this. I mean, if they're all from Berserker, I thought this is Wolverine. Like, he looks like he's kind of pitching himself to be the next Logan. Yeah. Um, with no complaints here at all. Uh, Hugh Jackman, one of the nicest guys in the business. Keanu Reeves, the nicest guy. Like, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, a, a new telling of a Logan-esque character, I'm totally on board with. I don't, I wouldn't cast Keanu as the next Logan because he's just too old. He's doing he's doing pretty well in John Wick. Although every time he starts limping, I'm just like, take care of yourself, sweet. But I'm like, if we're gonna air in like the older part of Logan's story, we have Hugh Jackman already. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. if we're gonna recast Logan as a character, picking someone young and doing a different part of the tale would probably be the way to go. But having I gave a thumbs up when we said like a brutally violent new series because I in particular really like when comic books and media that are more violent in nature actually show what that violence would look like like it's something taking back to logan it's something i thought they did really well in the movie logan because it's mm -hmm. like uh you know like snicked wouldn't just be a little bubble that said snicked and then the dude falls down like that's blades going through a human being that's terrifying so like when you saw logan you're like yeah yeah oh yeah that's that's what that that's what that would look like um, but I enjoy the realism of them showing that instead of trying to sugarcoat it in any way. Um, and especially in comics, and I think because in an art style, it's not as gross to me as it is in other forms. Um, so I'm, I'm on board with that, and I can't wait to see what this is. So Zelda got up, walked across so that she could lay on my foot. Is this a cute moment you're having okay i wasn't sure <laughs> my foot's her pillow i love her <laughs> if i um if i wasn't worried about you messing up your setup i would have said take your camera and like show us hey baby come here it's time to there we go oh boof oh i boofed her in the head coming up there she is there she is <laughs> Uh, she was just trying to sleep on my foot. Um, thank you so much, Amy, for the reading news. It is now time for Trisha and I to discuss what we are currently reading. Yay! <laughs> oh. Ooh, what's Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and tell me everything, please. Um, this is a book I was kind of inspired by. So last week we had Troy Baker and he talked about a book oh, yeah. that he rereads every so often. 
Um, and this is my book that I reread every so often. It is short. Each chapter is about like a page and a half to two pages of small Ooh. pages. It's like a tiny book. Yeah. Um, so you can just pick it up and read a chapter or two very quickly in between doing other things, which fits my lifestyle for sure. And it is a book for people like you and I, Maud. It is a book for people who take on way too much and put mm. immense pressure on ourselves to do all of the things all of the time. Um, and this book is just full of lots of little common sense reminders. To, yeah. And that full title is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff. Yeah. Um, and it just helps you kind of every time I read it when I need to regain perspective. Because, you know, like there's just a little page and a half on like your inbox does not need to be empty all the time. Yeah, but it is. Well, no. Well, if it is, then that's great. But like if you need to leave some things in your inbox until the next day, give yourself a break. That's okay. Mm -hmm. When you die and if you believe you go to the pearly gates, they're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry. Did you have all of your emails checked off before you're allowed in? Like, it just really helps you put everything in perspective and realize that some of the things that you might be really stressing out over or really guilting yourself for are probably not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of life. And I always find that I read it and then I have like so much more inner peace and then I get to the point where I need to reread it. Um, yeah, but it is it is a book that I lend to people that I reread at least probably once a year um, that I got from my mom, actually, because she was like, I think you could use this. Aww. Now, I don't know if my mom had even read the book. She just knows that I'm like a more tightly wound personality type. Um, and it's just been lovely. I love it. I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, at one point, I thought about making the Naked Truth series just each episode tackling a different chapter of this book. Oh, I like that. Because I love the advice in it so much, and I feel like it's helped me so much that I want to share it with other people. Don't sweat yeah. the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. I um, I would probably be like that if I noticed that I was complaining more and more. I can't stand it when other people complain because, again, it's like it's just small stuff. This isn't worth like having any negative feelings over. This isn't worth clouding your brain. But notice that I would start, like if I was getting quite caught up about a lot of things, I would start sweating the small stuff and just whoever was in earshot, they would get an ear full of it. So mm -hmm. what I used to do, I used to live near Griffith Observatory in LA and I would kind of go there because one of the things that's there are all the sizes of the planets and you would see like, but it was to scale. So let's just say like Mer Mercury is teeny tiny and then uh, Venus is quite a bit bigger and then Earth is like, I'm telling you, like it's about this big on in the display. It's tiny. And then Jupiter's like, you know, massive. And then it shows you like the timeline in millions and millions of years. And then it kind of says, you are here. And it's like, Vroom. and I go, oh, so these problems that seem really big to me, <laughs> not only are my problems not big, but I am not big and I am merely a blip and I won't even matter in the grand scheme of things. And my time alive is kind of all pointless, well, not pointless, but like it just doesn't matter. And I'm yeah. only made up of a little bit of matter. And so like that to me kind of like will help me with my perspective on it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, I've got I a love the Griffith about. Observatory. For the record, we should like go there all the time because it's amazing. Once it opens again, of course. Oh, yeah, whenever that's going to be. Whenever um, that's going to be. What are you reading? I'm reading, uh, this is for Nerdist Book Club's new book. It is Claudia Gray, who I love. I've covered Lost Stars before on Geek Bombs Book Club, um, but she's done a second novel called Bloodline, and it takes place seven years before The Force Awakens, and it's from Leia's perspective. So Leia is 49. She's had Ben with Han Solo. He's semi sort of retired, but he's still got like that sort of smuggling war hero kind of vibes. She has been balancing sort of like uh, her ambassador duties mixed in with being in the Galactic Senate. And they're kind of really tackling life post Palpatine and what it looked like to have an all consuming uh, corrupt leader that was in a dictatorship where he as the empire was able to completely manipulate and uh, corrupt all of the governing system. Awesome. And I previously don't really like talking uh, or like, you know, talking about politics as soon as like congressional or, you know, is mentioned, fade out. 
And if we all remember from Phantom Menace, like the majority of that movie was about the trade federations. And I was like, oh my God, I don't care. <laughs> but in this particular way, Claudia Gray does such an amazing job at presenting the facts and then also divulging the emotional consequence of these facts. And she really puts like, it's called instead of like, you know, you're the red and the blue side here, the Democrats and the Republics, it is mm -hmm. called the uh, populist faction and the uh, centrists. And it's talking about how, and it's so relevant to sort of now, but both parties have like opposing sort of ways to do things, but neither is necessarily right and wrong. They're just different. And so it's arguing sort of like both of those sides, but showing that you can have middle ground and actually have a great conversation and learn it's 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 been actually really really wonderful but it's got a great a lot of action i love hearing Le learning more about leia as well fantastic book i'm trying to get claudia gray on a geek bomb book club after show um i've just emailed so we'll see if i hear back from that one because that Fingers would be oh for us. that'd be so have cool you have you have you read any star wars books um i have listened to but yeah. not read darth plagueis nice so with a lot of the star wars books now that they're canon especially they have all the access to the music sound effects you name it and so it absolutely aids the storytelling because at once you know at one stage it's like i you know i look to the left ew ew ha huh, and an alarm went off you're like yeah i heard it i heard it like yeah. it's so immersive in that way yeah. and then using the star wars soundtrack to kind of really amplify that mood and that setting ah, i love it yay so cool yeah. well those are our watching recommendations let's get into some bombs away q a and bring amy back in here hi amy hey girl hey what are you reading at the moment you said you had one hi. on the table there is that is that annihilation no no it's between the world and me by oh. tana hisi coates what um, is that so it's basically um uh a black father writes a letter to his son and i believe this is actually tough that's oh, what i whoa. had mistaken for yeah i know i was like oh okay what? Looks yeah. very similar. Um, so it's actually ta nahisi coates writing a letter to his son and just telling oh. him about experiences as a black man and um i just found out apparently a day ago uh variety said that they're going to turn it into an hbo series did i read that right um Ooh. Yeah, something like that. So I'm definitely trying to up my my game when it comes to reading um, uh, books from Black authors and cool. Black experiences. So I love yeah, that. yeah. Um, it's actually really great and it's not too long. Uh, and there are no chapters, just like Doom doesn't have chapters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So also, I noticed you're wearing your Bond with Buns uh, shirt from Pundawear.net. That is our, okay. our layer design that we have. That's a really good timing. <laughs> I noticed. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, as far as questions go, we have this one from James Smith. <clears throat> what activity during the day powers you up and what activity powers you down? I like Ooh. that. Um, have you got anything, Trish? What powers me up and what powers me down? Coffee? Does that count as a power up? I don't know. I'm someone that has more energy in the mornings than in the evenings, um, which is very tricky because my husbando is the opposite. So, like, mm. I wake up in the morning, get my coffee, getting ready for the day, thinking about all the things I want to tackle today, and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. It's going to be a good day. I got this. And uh, I'll start, like, trying to talk to Nate about, like, what about this today? Can you call them today? I'm going to do that. And he's like, I just, I'm only comprehending about 10% of the words coming out of your mouth right now. I'm not <laughs> on your level yet. Um, and then, conversely, after 8.15, I'm like, I just want a bowl of ice cream and I want to sit and watch TV. And I don't, and, like, my husband's like, cool, let's do our workout for the week. And I'm like, oh, oh no. no. But I'm done. I already did everything today. Yeah, I'm, uh -huh. I'm both. Uh, shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a morning person and I also wind down in the evening. Trisha, I'm on day six, five in a row of eating ice cream for dinner. I love ice cream <laughs> so much. So much. I love it Sorry. so much. Although you should try to have, I, I'm, I, should, I was going to say you should try to have something for dinner before that. But let me just tell you, straight up, 
after one of my workouts with my trainer. I know I'm supposed to have protein after workouts. I got out the ice cream cart and I was like, it's milk. It's got protein in it. And just got myself a fatty bowl of ice cream. I got sprinkles. And so like, I get so excited about having rainbow sprinkles on my ice cream that like it gets to dinner time. And I'm just like, I can't wait. No, it's not a cry for help. <laughs> I just realized I could, so I am. <laughs> yeah. Like. Why? Why not? I'm in that part of lockdown. Some people are baking sourdough bread. I'm having ice cream for dinner. No judgment. No judgment uh, whatsoever. Do what you got to do to get through lockdown. That's what I will say. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have you. a super important question from Beardtastic Yogi. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Honestly, like a really nice vanilla, like I, because I like putting things on it, and it's okay. such it's such a great compliment. What do you to put it. on it then? Um, I like I liked crushed peanuts. I liked rainbow sprinkles. I like the topping that hardens when it gets cold. Mm-hmm. Oh my Shelf. god, I love ice cream, mm-hmm. and I bought a couple of flavors already because it's lockdown. And I bought a Rocky Road one, and I was like, yay! But then I realized that the whole ice cream was chocolate flavored ice cream. Oh, uh, Rocky Road is chocolate. <laughs> it's chocolate with walnuts I mean, and marshmallow all. through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I eat it all, but I just don't love chocolate ice cream. Gotcha. I like ice, vanilla as the base and then add stuff in. What about you, Trish? Um, so I am probably could be certified ice cream addict. Uh, uh, certainly an ice cream enthusiast. I My day job was working in an ice cream parlor 40 hours a week for the first six and a half years I was in L.A., um I yeah I'm I I know every type of ice cream I can tell you what every flavor is um and I have very distinct feelings about like I get so deep into ice cream that I've made combos that I don't think people have ever comboed before and I'm like that one's good that one's not so good let's try this one mix a little different here this is what happens when you work 40 hours at an ice cream parlor for six and a half years um I'm sure. Are you flirting? Because <laughs> like, like someone ordered a strawberry and cookies and cream shake and you accidentally put in peppermint because the peppermint colored ice cream is pretty close to the strawberry. Sounds like it might be gross. Spoiler alert. It's awesome. It's thin mints and a milkshake. Like you just you just mess and you go and you never stop. Um, yeah, girl. So my favorite ice cream to just buy like that's already pre-existing is Ben and Jerry's Half Baked. Because it is chocolate chip cookie dough and double fudge brownie mixed together. And again, mm. I think because of my background, I'm like the opposite of you, Maude. I'm like, not plain unless I'm coating it with caramel and hot fudge. And I'll take the magic shell, but I want the peanut butter magic shell. And put some Oreo crumbles on there. And, you know, like, I'm like, go, 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 go with your bad self in your ice cream. Um, and I cannot, <laughs> I cannot wait until Logan is old enough and we're out of quarantine enough to take that little dude for an ice cream sundae i can and like let him pick out his toppings oh man can't wait a coffee ice cream a coffee ice cream oh it's so it's so good and then we used to have cold rock uh in australia and you would like get chopped up tim tams and put it and spooned it in the coffee ice that was the best combo. I tried a few and that was for me the best combo. Amy, what's your favorite ice cream? Because this is the ice cream podcast now. I mean, geez. <laughs> Coffee ice cream with marshmallows. Marshmallows oh, or marshmallow oh, sauce? Good. No, no, no. Like marshmallows in there, like mixed okay. in. Okay. That's my jam. But I'm doing dairy free stuff now. Oh, I'm um, so for sorry. No, it's Well, no, really there's good, good dairy-free ice creams. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. There's this one from Nada Moo. And I can't, I can't remember what's in it, except that there might be some cookie dough, maybe, and other stuff. But like, I like it kind of like you, Trish, where it's just like put a bunch of stuff in there, but it has to be the stuff I like. Um, yeah. Like marshmallows, cookie dough, sometimes um, um, Oreos. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like a yeah. nut. I like a roasted nut. Mm. Oh, really? A little bit of almond? A little bit of peanut? Oh, I mm. draw the line. So and I'm I don't so like ther- surprised you didn't like Rocky Road, but it's because you don't like chocolate as your base. Yes, exactly. Got it. Got it. Because I'm like, I man, need- Rocky Road, <laughs> walnuts and malo? Sounds like it'd be right up your alley if you like nuts in your ice cream. I like nuts in my ice cream. How about a drumstick <laughs> ice cream? You'd probably like a drumstick ice cream. 
Oh, I really I do. I used to steal my grandmother's all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I when, was her primary carer, so. You know um, what? I have a really funny drumstick story, but I will save it for Power Down. Yay! Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, we will continue the ice cream discussion big time and we can talk through the therapeutic reasons why I'm <laughs> clearly been eating all this ice cream. Um, but, uh, what is the the power uh, the Twitch question? That was it. The, I think the, the favorite cream. kind of ice cream was the Twitch question. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. That is it for reading then, hey? Oh, cool. I'm actually Whoa. so excited to get into Power Down. So we're going to finish this nice and early. Thank you for watching Power Up. You've seen playing, watching, reading. If you've seen all of these, if you've been here alive, thank you so much as well. Drop a sub, drop a follow, do all that fun stuff. We really appreciate it. If you want to get your questions in and have them prioritized, patreon.com slash geekbomb. And if you sign up for $10, you can get the Power Down episode, which we are filming right after this thank you so much for watching we really appreciate your views and eyeballs on this um thanks for letting us chat ice cream for 25 minutes <laughs> <laughs> we totally did um thank you guys so much welcome to the new followers over here classy librarian resub for 68 months in a row oh, oh gee oh gee happy sub anniversary. uh yes uh, welcome to the new followers who are here today. You guys are awesome, classy. You're the best of the best, and you know that I adore you. And I know you redeem dragon scales for a one on one hangout, and we shall be doing that soon, my friend. Um, I cannot wait. So, thank you to everybody who was here. I know we got raided twice today, so I want to see Woo! if Iffy is still on to raid because I want to pay forward the raid today. I know we don't always raid after uh, power up, but let's see. Forward. Let me see if we got an Iffy on here to raid. I know he was playing Valorant. Ah! Who I see is on. <laughs> I don't know if he still is. Do you follow Kate Welsh from Wizards of the Coast? She's a legend. No, but I probably should. She's wonderful. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is on at the moment with the welcome in. I tried. Um, he's on. I guess, I get, yeah, I guess if he's no longer, oh, he, yes, he is. Raid Tool, what are you doing? Cheeky. Raid Tool, what are you, oh, Kate's on too? Lots of people are on. Okay, setting up a raid for my good buddy, Ifties. Uh, so, folks, please go tell Ify that Maude and I say hello and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. The next time that I will be streaming is Sunday morning starting Ghost of Tsushima. Ah! Um, and yeah, and if you want to check out, uh, I'm very excited in case you can't tell. Um, and yeah, you can check out Mod and Amy on all of the things all the time. Quickly, ladies, where can they find you? For Fridays, you've already missed today's uh, horror hangout with Amy. But Amy, where can people find your YouTube channel and your show? It's on, um, it's on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitch. Just follow me on my socials at AmyCassandraMTZ, but it's definitely on YouTube.com slash AmyCassandra at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Um, this weekend, tomorrow, uh, guys, if you are following any of the Comic-Con live online stuff, I am playing... Uh, Something. Dungeons and Dragons. What is the first edition temple, the, the Temple of Doom? I can oh, only like old school Indiana. module. That's cool. Parents? Tomb of Terrors, Christ. I am playing the Tomb of Terrors um, with not only Kate Welsh, but Joe Mantinello and uh, B. Dave Walters and uh, Xander. Xander Riffic is, is on that one as well. There's a bunch of awesome, awesome peeps. I am playing a ranger called Ursula. Uh, she's totes OP, so <laughs> watch me kick button that one. And then we're going to do a live Q&A afterwards from, I believe, uh either four till five thirty or five till six something i should know i should know this but i only just awesome. realized that i make it yesterday so i only just said yes to it well but that sounds really of horrors. fun yay tomb of horrors <laughs> i could not get it out i'm gonna get ice cream right now <laughs> swear to god We're uh, if I if I didn't if I wasn't worried about spoiling dinner I would totally have ice cream during power down. But anyway, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your day, and again, tell Ify we said hi. Bye, everybody. Bye.